In today's video, I'm going to introduce Adobe Lightroom Classic, and the keyword there is classic. Adobe actually makes two different types of Lightroom software, and the other one is called Lightroom CC. Now, Lightroom CC doesn't have as many features as Lightroom Classic, and it also requires that you store all of your photos on Adobe's cloud. Of course, Adobe is then going to charge you the more photos that you have. So that's why I call Lightroom CC Bad Lightroom. So just double check if you're following along with this video course that you have Lightroom Classic. It's the desktop version of Lightroom that kind of mimics the earlier standalone software that Adobe used to offer right about here. So what does Lightroom Classic actually do? Well, there's three main things that you can expect out of Lightroom. I'm just going to call it Lightroom from here on out. Number one, it helps you organize your photos. Number two, edit your photos. And number three, export your photos. I'm going to go into much more detail on all of those things later in this video series, but for now, let's just take a look at how Lightroom appears before I've imported a single photo. All right, so here's how Lightroom looks by default. Uh, you can see it's telling me that I need to import photos in order to start actually doing anything with them, and that's true, but for now I'm not going to import any just because I want to show you how the layout of Lightroom works. Right now you can see that we're in the library module of Lightroom, and this is the section of Lightroom where you do all of your organization. Now, a lot of those good organizational tools are on the left-hand sidebar. You can see I've got the catalog as well as the folders on my hard drive where my pictures are stored, and then the collections within Lightroom where I have my photos. On the right-hand side, you can see there's some more information about the photos themselves. For example, metadata is where you're going to have information like your shutter speed, aperture, and ISO for a given photo. Beyond that, one of the more interesting things in Lightroom is this library filter at the top. You can see if I click on metadata, I now have some interesting things that I can sort in order to find the photo that I'm looking for. Uh, for now, it just says date, camera, lens, and aperture. But if I click on one of these, there's a much wider range of options that I have at my disposal. Uh, for example, if I want to search by the ISO speed, because I know that I took a particular photo at base ISO, then I can click that very easily and find my photos as quickly as possible. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at the other really important module in Lightroom, the develop module. Now the develop module is where you're going to edit all of your pictures. Uh, this is where Lightroom has all of its different post-processing options. You can see on the left hand side I've got a few very important things, especially this history button. This shows you the edit history of a photo and it also lets you jump from the current version to a previous one. But these other ones are also some very useful options that I'm going to talk about in future videos. But it's really this panel on the right hand side where you're going to be spending the most time. This is where you're editing all of your pictures in Lightroom. Uh, right here at the top I've got this exposure slider, the contrast slider, and then some other important things like vibrance and saturation. And there are plenty of editing options in Lightroom. Uh, in a rough sense they're arranged from the most important at the top to the least important at the bottom, but that's not totally accurate. Uh, some of these other ones, for example the sharpening settings, are quite important even though they're fairly low on the list. Now the other really important thing, even though it doesn't take up that much space, is this little bar right here. Now these are the local adjustments within Lightroom. This allows you to edit part of the photo without editing other parts. For example, the one that I've got highlighted right now is the adjustment brush. And this lets you draw a specific part of the photo that you want to edit without affecting the rest. So you can see these are some pretty extensive editing options that you have available. Uh, you're not going to be able to post-process quite everything that you want in Lightroom, but pretty much any normal day-to-day -day editing you can easily accomplish using these tools. But I do want to point out these remaining five modules at the top. Uh, you're not going to be spending nearly as much time in those sections of Lightroom compared to the library and develop module. They basically do what they say though. Uh, the map takes GPS points off of your photo if you have them, and it puts your photos on a map. Uh, the slideshow lets you create slideshows. Personally, I don't even allow those to be shown at the top just because it makes my workspace a little bit neater, and I literally never use those options. So all that covers two of the big things that Lightroom can do, organizing and then editing your photos. I'm also going to talk about how to export photos in some future videos, but basically all you need to do is right click on your photo, either in the library or the develop module, and this little box that says export pops up. You just click that, and then a dialog pops up that lets you select the export settings that you want for a particular photo. Very easy to do, and that covers the three big things, organizing, editing, and exporting. One thing that you should know about Lightroom is that it's a raw photo processor. And if you've never heard of raw photos before, I recommend reading our article on raw versus JPEG 
at photographylife.com. Essentially, RAW is just another file type, kind of like JPEG or PNG. And every camera company names it a little bit differently. Uh, for Sony, RAW photos are called .ARW files. For Canon, it's CRW, for Nikon, NEF, and so on. But regardless, the important thing is that RAW photos are super malleable. You can edit them pretty extensively without losing very much image quality. You definitely can't say the same thing about JPEGs, which are much more heavily compressed. But the big problem with RAW photos is that you need specialized software if you want to edit them properly. And Lightroom is one of those software options. Now, of course, you can still edit JPEGs in Lightroom if you want to, but the key to the software is that it makes raw photo editing super easy. So you no longer have an excuse to avoid setting raw photos in your camera's menu so that you're taking pictures at the highest possible quality. And lastly, I get a lot of questions about why Lightroom is even worth using in the first place. And that's because once you've bought the photography bundle from Adobe, you also have access to Photoshop. And to many people, Photoshop sounds like it would be the gold standard. It's so well known even among non-photographers. But the problem with Photoshop is that it has no organizational component. It's also a much more complicated piece of software than Lightroom. So really, if you have a large number of photos to edit and organize, Lightroom is the much better option. Uh, personally, I only really use Photoshop to make graphics for photography life, and I use Lightroom for all of my day-to-day -day editing. So in the next video, I'm going to introduce and demystify the Lightroom catalog. Uh, this is another feature that Lightroom has which Photoshop does not, and it's also something that tends to confuse a lot of photographers. So sit back, make yourself a cup of coffee, don't go outside, and enjoy. Enjoy.